may I now uh, come back to the meeting because uh, I was hoping that was a, um, a Vona, by the way. She's been caught. A client's been on on the phone and said he wants the stuff in an hour. Uh, so she's hoping to get it away to him and, and join us. Um, but Frank, you said last week very kindly that you would uh, give us a, a 10 minute talk. Are you okay to be able to do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I'll, we... I'll, sh I'll share screen in a minute is, uh, and, and may need help and guidance in doing that in a meaningful way, but, but I, I will do in a minute. Um, I think the, the thing I must preface this, and, and I was hoping Amanda would be online because when I'd finished, she could add the sort of technical and professional expertise. I am not a social media trainer at all. What I wanted to do really was just share my journey on LinkedIn, which has accelerated while I've been at home during, during this period. And hopefully um, give some tips as to things I found that worked uh, and how I've used this time to put my use of LinkedIn, and, and this is only about LinkedIn, on a professional footing. So um, the things I've learned, I should really, I suppose, in all fairness and in all honesty, um, and, and a solicitor using the word honesty always causes alarm amongst those listening. Yeah, yeah. I acknowledge those who, who I've learned from. So Chris Roxburgh of, uh, of my marketing guy and uh, Anthony O'Brien, who's the MD of Profici, and, and Len uh, Profici are a web design digital marketing company, and he now franchises that. So um, he has people who, with a franchise from all, all over the country, selling websites and marketing, and it's fed in to Profici Liverpool, where the work is done. Um, so they generate the business and, and don't need to do it. So there's a, a franchise um, model you might want to look at. So when I started on LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, as a uh, solicitor, I went on as, you know, as we all do, people say you should join LinkedIn. So I went on and it was Frank Rogers with a photograph who I worked for, Tag was solicitor. So there's how many thousands and thousands of solicitors on LinkedIn. So that gives you no um, unique image. It gives you no niche expertise. It doesn't make you, uh, you interesting. Um, for some reason, you know, you, you, you don't have to hate solicitors, but for reasons I've never understood, most people seem to find it well worth the effort. Um, and on LinkedIn, you, you are not of interest to, to somebody. And I used to spend time each week posting and commenting and looking what people and you were doing. So I was giving time to LinkedIn, thinking it was meaningful and constructive and getting absolutely nothing in return. And that changed. If I just go to share screen now and bring up hopefully my LinkedIn page comes up. Um, that changed when, and there, I, I saved this. When I turned on this morning, the top post was from somebody who I've, whose name seems vaguely familiar. Um, so I, I didn't click new posts so that I could show what a, what a good devotee I am of Mr. Wayne Farrell. But that changed. If we go to my profile now, um, and LinkedIn changed for me when I did that. And it was Chris Roxburgh who, who showed me how to do this. So I changed after Frank Rogers solicitor to driving offense solicitor. And the impact that makes is that when you comment or, or like anything on LinkedIn, which takes you a second, and somebody looks to see, oh, who's like that or who's commented. So the person who's posted it, they don't see the anodyne tag Frank Rogers solicitor, which has no interest to them whatsoever. They see Frank Rogers driving offense solicitor. And as simple as that is, um, the connection requests I get, when, which I always personally acknowledge uh, and sort of ask was the particular reason you wanted to connect. 
I would say 60, 70% of the people respond and say, well, I saw what you did. Um, I don't need you now, but you never know when I might. So that immediately drew an audience to me nationally um, because they saw, oh, right, this guy is, is niche. He's got specific expertise and everybody in business will usually drive and need their driving license. And then the banner at the top, you see where it's got, uh, let me save you a license. Um, Chris gave me a website address and, and I found this unbelievable when I did it. Um, and I went on this website, it was somewhere in, the, in Asia, and you go on it and you put what you want. So I put LinkedIn banner uh, post and you put a budget. And he told me, don't put a budget more than £10. And I thought, well, nobody's going to design me a banner for less than £10. This is nonsensical. I think he said £5. And I thought, this is, just, this is nonsensical. So I put 10. Within five minutes of putting that post on, I had 20 or 30 uh, of these designer guys in Asia clamoring for my business. And I got somebody to do, design that, which would have been beyond me. So I'll be totally honest. That would maybe something you guys can do would have been totally beyond me. Um, and that cost me £7.50. Uh, and I thought, you know, that is really nice. From the day I did that, literally from the day I did that, LinkedIn started generating paid work for me and has continued to do so. So I get clients from all over the country um, on LinkedIn um, simply because of how I changed my profile. So when I was off, um, the first thing I did was um, I got from Anthony O'Brien uh, a download on, um, it was actually on um, how to write a social media campaign. And because I was focusing on LinkedIn, and he does have a LinkedIn one, which I saw subsequently, his LinkedIn download is all about writing uh, a company LinkedIn strategy. So I haven't added to that, but I have finished this week um, my social media LinkedIn strategy plan. And it was really useful to analyze my setup and go through the 10 steps in this plan, which I'll, I'll finish with, um, hopefully not over, overrunning, um, and just see where I was and what I was doing. And, and although I thought I was busy on LinkedIn and LinkedIn was still um, generating work for me, I wasn't actually doing that much. And to my horror, I found that I hadn't posted uh, a driving offense article since 2016. So that was four years without me giving any knowledge or insight or trying to share something interesting. Uh, I, and I, I really couldn't believe that. And this is all about building because LinkedIn is a business to business site, it's about for me building credibility, visibility uh, and authority. And business clients are good for me because they will need their license and they will have, particularly if they're a director or a business owner, they will have the budget not only to pay me a fee, but to pay me a premium value fee. So, I thought this is important. I can't not look at this. Um, the next thing, uh, so then I looked at articles and from, um, I think towards the end of March, I have posted an article once a week uh, and I've got one. Uh, I've been for my permitted walk into the outside world this morning. So I haven't posted one, but I have got one that's going to go on today, which is how the police are dealing with drivers on semi-deserted roads who are speeding excessively and what impact that is having on insurance renewals. So it's fairly topical uh, and, and that's going to go on today. But the next thing I did uh, was I looked at groups and if I can be clever enough to bring up this, um, this is part of my 
um, strategy plan. So the first step was define your starting point. So uh, uh, if you can see that, you can see what the state of play was then. And then I started listing the articles um, I, I'd written. And then I looked at the groups I was in. And you'll see that there, there's an interesting one for you, Len, Mercury Franchising Network. I've left that now. It had no particular relevance to me. And it only had 23 members. So it's, it's no point me being in it. So I left some groups that were of limited value. And then the top three that you'll see there, Drivers and Trainers Association, 6,000 members. Um, I've had some members in that group commenting on my posts. So I joined that. Chief Executives, um, massive group, 92,000, great target market for me. And the Fleet Managers Forum, another great uh, target market for me. So I joined some selective groups and you can see that I have started to um, post um, articles uh, directly, not only just onto my feed, but directly into these selected groups. Can I and this, for a second, Frank? Yeah. I don't seem to have, I can't see what you've got on here. I've still right. got your front page. Uh, oh, right, okay. Well, I've tried to put um, a Word document up. Ah, is it there now? There you go. Yeah. Okay. So you see the, the top three groups. So the strategy with groups was choose those that are directly relevant and you can search with keywords and then look at the, look at the other people's activity and comment and like, and then look for people of interest once you've engaged with them to invite to connect and in inviting them comment on something you know they've done or something from their profile so that you're hitting uh, a note with them now since i did that you'll see there um, linkedin liverpool um, posted an article on the 28th and a guy who's a senior director in the construction industry wanted to connect with me because he thinks he may well uh, need me. And then um, further down, uh, there is, um, I'm not sure how I go down in that article, but further down, there is uh, a reference to um, somebody in Warrington, the MD of a company with a small fleet of vehicles. He's in a right mess. And he contacted me and has instructed me on a number of jobs uh, as a direct result of posting an article and posting it um, into that um, into that group. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, one of the things I started to do. The other things I think are, is important is when you're inviting somebody to connect is to personalize them and not sell and then build the relationship. Part of the strategy plan is about timing and what you want to achieve um, and, and what your objectives are. And one of the ways I get shares, I'm in a number of what's called legs, which are uh, LinkedIn engagement groups. So a BNI group I'm in, another uh, Jeff Jones networking group I'm in, uh, and a, a legs group that Chris Roxburgh set up, which must have 30 plus people in. So it's a WhatsApp group and all it's for is every time one of us posts, you post the link to the group in WhatsApp and we all then try and hit it, even if we just like it or comment or share because it boosts the uh, reach of mm -hmm. the post. So the LinkedIn engagement groups I find um, very useful. The other thing that that I looked at was my use of hashtags and I wasn't using them, don't particularly understand them, I've got a better knowledge now. And I thought being very clever when I posted my articles, I was posting things like driving ban, speeding offence, I thought this is really clever and relevant. Till I looked at those hashtags and found I was the only person following them. So that was a lot of use, I was posting a hashtag that, that I was interested in. But I then found that hashtag motoring has something like 3 million followers. 
So my recent articles all, and they will all from now on have the hashtag motoring. So it's another way of trying to uh, reach um, a target group. So the 10 steps in uh, Anthony O'Brien's um, plan were one, define your starting point. So I did that and looked at where I was, particularly my lack of focused use of it in terms of uh, articles. The second one is what's your target group? So that led me to three groups that I did join because they are football agents or business owners or company directors. The third step is set your objectives. So I identified those. And of course, the beauty of having any business plan in writing is you, you tend to become a slave to it because, because you know it's there. Um, then it was look at co communications channels, but that's for broader social media stuff. Um, work out what your content format is going to be. Put the strategy to work. Um, if you want, use a management tool. So that would be something like Hootsuite. Um, organize your calendar. This is something I am going to do in Outlook because I'm only getting used to this now. Is plan when you're going to do an article. Um, think of what it's going to be on. So I get Google alerts on things like speeding offense, driving while disqualified. And you'd be amazed how much interesting stuff from the press comes up. Uh, and it's really um, helpful. Um, and then, so I'm going to plan that. So, you know, for example, in December, January, you would write stuff about drink driving because the police are hyperactive. In the winter, you might have stuff about driving in bad weather. You know, those sort of things. But having a calendar to plan when you want to do an article. And I'm going to do a month-end analysis now of my month's activity and analyze, you know, what were the pluses, what didn't work, what did work. Uh, and that was the last step in the plan, was analyze your results. And I have found this so useful to, to actually dissect that I'd gone back to playing with LinkedIn instead of thinking about it, having a strategy, and using my time to move that strategy forward. And I found that a, a really cathartic exercise. And LinkedIn works for me, and you can see from you know, an article on the 28th, a focused invitation to connect and a guy with two or three complicated driving messes he got himself uh, into. Mm -hmm. So that's how I've tried to, to use it on my journey. Wow. Well, I've certainly learned a lot and I thought I knew a little bit about LinkedIn. I've been on it for a long time. But all of a sudden, you've started to open up my brain again remembering what i used to do five years ago on linkedin and it's totally different to what i'm doing now so it's going to be for me a case of going back to square one well that's what i did jeffrey um i started to go back to square one funnily enough last week and i did it using our friday uh video and I've sent it out to about 25 people uh, on LinkedIn direct. And I must look at what's happened, but I've just, while, while we were, while I was trying to get Vona on, I looked at, at LinkedIn and there's another four people wanting to contact me literally from last Friday. Wow. So consequently, all your photographs, all our, were up on my LinkedIn site last week. And again, all right, it'll only be the four of us this week, but they'll go up again. And I, Jeffrey, what I've sorry, got to... The, the, the other thing I, I should have mentioned, which may be worth all of you doing, is, is I did a, um, an analysis of my competitors. So I know locally, so if I just look on Merseyside, there are many solicitors on Merseyside who specialize in driving offenses. There are criminal firms that do crime and like to have some driving, but there aren't many who blatantly just do driving. There are some, but you can count them on the fingers of one hand and have them over. So I, so I knew who they were. So I did some searches on LinkedIn 
for driving offence solicitor Liverpool and that sort of thing. And virtually nothing comes up. Mm -hmm. I then looked at, I then made a list of who I know my local competitors are. And I then looked at their LinkedIn activity. And none of them have ever posted an article. None of them are in oh. any meaningful activity on LinkedIn at all. And that was just a fantastic boost for me because it means that I have almost a home run on that business site. And it was very comforting to look at what your competitors are doing in the immediate geographical area and think, you know, you're missing a trick. And that's why I get people from London, the Midlands, the Northeast, Yorkshire, contacting me and not just contacting me for free advice, but contacting me and instructing me. So that's also worth doing. Look at who you think you're competing with. Look at what they're doing and make yourself different. But carrying on from that, Frank, Obviously, you're saying you're getting people contacting you from around the country. So now we've been put into this situation where we can't travel. Will you find that from now on, you will do a lot more over Zoom to oh, them until totally. the court case comes up? Totally. I mean, you know, for one example, I acted for... Um, a guy who ran a very uh, large company, very niche, contacted me, was at risk of losing his license, contacted me. Uh, he was in court in Harrogate. So we did everything by phone and email, which isn't ideal because I've, he has to give evidence. It's, you know, it's a complicated hearing. He has to give evidence and the evidence has to be um, spot on. Um, and um, we needed lots of supporting documents. I needed a diary of his activity, all sorts of things. And we did it and we prepped it. I didn't meet him till the morning of the hearing. Mm. And that, so that is lack of personal contact, which I don't like. Mm. Um, and I will offer even clients who are local, if it's difficult for me to get to their office or difficult for them to get to mine, I will offer everybody a Zoom meeting. And for clients who aren't in my immediate vicinity, it's perfect. And, and what I will also offer is a free initial, say, half hour Zoom when you can have a chat, make some notes. You, you can, as you said, I remember when you said you didn't, you wouldn't coach somebody. You want to see them because you want to see their Lights body language their and you want to see if they're engaging or what you're dealing with. You learn a lot, don't you, from you seeing do. somebody. And I like to the think- The favorite that, one that, is this. When I'm, with, if I'm with a client, <laughs> my, my conversion rate, if I'm with a client for the first meeting is you know, massive because I like to think I can, I can mm. convey the right degree of seniority and gravitas and knowledge, etc. So I will be using Zoom, both locally and nationally, and it will transform the dynamic. Yeah. Fascinating. And the other thing I want to do, which I haven't done yet, but I've just bought um, you know, a little tripod to put the phone on, it's not, not uh, high tech, but I want to start doing some little video talks on LinkedIn, you know, three minutes tops, things like um, what you, you know, what are the tips when you get a notice asking who was the driver of your vehicle because it's been caught speeding. There are so many things you can get wrong, so many easy tips that you need to know. And what I've got in mind is doing a sort of three video series, short bite-sized chunks this is, these are the first things you do. The next video, I'll say at the end, I'll cover this, this, and this. So if, you're a, if the vehicle's registered to a limited company, what are the differences then? What's the advantages of having the vehicle registered to a limited company? Because there are plenty. And that's the other thing I'm going to start doing. 
is to is to try and do some video presentations but keep them short yeah well this again is what uh, Wayne has been saying to me over the last few weeks uh, and I've got to admit I'm beginning to do it I, I, I found uh, a load of audio booms that I put on in 2006 that when I was putting them onto, uh, onto my blogs on my website, I was actually putting an audio boo on as well. And I'd forgotten I'd done them. I'd forgotten I'd had them. And even though I say it myself, some of them were quite interesting. <laughs> so I'm, I'm revamping it the same as I said last week, I'm revamping empowerment series and the empowerment book. Yeah, very good idea. And I think, uh, you know, at this time, Jeffrey, we're talking about when we come out of this airline pilots, not just airline pilots, people in hospitality and tourism mm -hmm. and, and, and retail. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are going to be so many people that, that may want to franchise Len. You know, yeah. that may, that may, they may see that as their way forward. They may want to start up a small business from home on their own. And, and they may just, you know, they may just be so damaged that they don't know what to do. And that's where, Jeffrey, what you can offer them mm -hmm. is so vital. So vital. In, in fact, the, um, and Wayne. If you go back to the, um, the big recession at the end of the 80s, um, early 90s, um, I, was, I was franchise manager at Amtrak um, once that recession was over. And... It was just unbelievable. Yeah. It, compared with today, we, we would put an advert in one of the local papers, like the Newcastle Chronicle, and we'd get 200 replies. And I used mm. to go up to Newcastle or anywhere, we, we did it all over the country, and I was doing presentations to about 50 people, and they were, they were fighting for an area <laughs> who, who would get the area. Mm. I sold. This figure sounds daft, I know, but I sold 69 franchises in one year. That was in the, in the sort of early 90s. Yes. You know? yes. and my colleague did very much the same, you know, and it was, I mean, it's changed now, but I can see a similar situation happening. Once yeah. it comes out, be a lot of people well, being redundant, you know, and so on. Yeah. And Funny people, people will need what the three of you do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Without, without a doubt. I think what we've got to say is, you know, as happened at this meeting with John Haynes yesterday and the 1817, I can't remember the number of people on it, there were, there were quite a few people saying similar things to what we're saying. And each one of us has got a different niche that we are capable of specializing in. My problem is, because I know I've done so many bits and pieces over my life, and I do so many bits and pieces with regard to Guru Jeffrey. I need to specialize myself. I need to decide what my niche is. Sure. Yeah. And I think that's I think, important. I think, I think if you pick either what you think is going to be the most in demand or the most popular, or another way of looking at it is what's the, what's the you know, this goes back to Wayne's presentation. What's your best earner? You know, what's your big ticket job that you want to sell? Mm. And then look at, uh, and I thought Wayne's approach was fascinating. Oh, yes. How do you get people to buy the big ticket service that you actually want to sell them? You, you, you may not go in and try and sell them the big ticket job because they might say, oh my God, I haven't got the time or that's too expensive. Yeah. But if you can give them an appetizer Mm. and get them into the Jeffrey Prince program with an appetizer, that's a nice way of yeah. catching a sprat and it's becoming it. a rather healthy looking mackerel on the barbecue. Yeah, this is it. I said it to Wayne yesterday afternoon, but at, on this meeting, halfway through the meeting, a lady turned around and said, John, is that... Is Jeffrey Prince the one who wrote the book Success the Choice is Yours that I've got, that I got from you? And John said, yes. And she said, Jeffrey, I really enjoyed that book. <laughs> and that was 2008, something like yeah. that, when I did it. I can't remember now. Yeah. So consequently, people do, there was a, 
anyway, I'm fascinated. I really enjoy that talk, you, you, you know, uh, and uh, I think it's so empowering. Uh, Wayne, for once, you've been so quiet. I've just been listening. Yeah, as you say, for once. Um, I mentioned to you last week that I was putting together this ebook around LinkedIn marketing, and uh, it's pretty much done. All I've got to find now is a way of reducing the size of the PDF from 600 odd KBs, you know, so that it doesn't take up too much space on my website, etc. So, what I'll do is I'll email that over to you guys. And to anybody in the audience that's listening, it's available as a free download on the website as well, uh, or certainly will be over this mm -hmm. weekend. But uh, it really, you know, these things, Frank, that you've said, to go and create your profile, just those minor little tweaks at times, sometimes can be the thing that makes all the difference. Yeah. And I think it's really, really useful what you brought up. So what I want to do, and if that's okay with you guys, is, uh, you know, as you know, we already edit this video and put it available on, on YouTube and that, but I actually want to specifically take uh, elements from this and I'm going to put it within the article mm -hmm. uh, where they can actually download the ebook. Because I think Frank, you know, coming from you, uh, those things that you've said, it'd be highly uh, valuable. Can you know, I ask you a question? Want to look at the, at LinkedIn. Wayne, may I ask you a question? You know, mm -hmm. we've been talking about articles mm -hmm. and you posting articles. Are these articles that you're posting, what, 3,000, 4,000 words or, 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 you know, bigger or smaller or what? And can I ask a question as well, Wayne? Where do we find right, so these a, on YouTube? Firstly, the, the videos on YouTube is just on my YouTube channel which is uh, coaching with NLP. So if you write an article, I'd say you probably want to make a minimum of a thousand words, mm. maximum of 3000, because people also want to read that much. Yeah. Typically this, and, and there's been research done with what sort of the sweet spot, you know, because if I want to choose a keyword, so let's say example, NLP training, right? I don't want to, blast the whole article just with the keyword NLP training. So I'm going to give variations of that as well. NLP practitioner, NLP course, become an NLP practitioner, etc. Right? So you within, if you've got this 2000 or 3000 word article, you've got more opportunity to actually uh, add in your keywords in the different formats. Okay. So it doesn't right. look like it's a, um, mm -hmm. you know, like you're spamming the keyword. So ideally, if you're doing the article at least a thousand words, like I said, more so it's about 2000, which is at the moment seems to be like yeah. a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're writing an ebook, and this is also true, maybe if you're writing you know, more than 3000 words, what I would typically do then is write a shorter article. It might only be 750 to a thousand words, but it's more just the introduction to create awareness. And then within that, there's a link that says download here. You can also have an example on the side of your, you know, so many websites on the side have a get a free ebook or yeah. free stuff mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. So you can have another link in there available as well. And so when people click on that, they download the ebook, and that can then be your 30, 50, 60 pages. Yeah, yeah. So on my site at the moment, I think I've got four ebooks on how to uh, do 1% daily growth. So essentially thinking of Kaizen, um, an ebook around emotional intelligence. Uh, there, there's a, yeah. three or four different ones. So um, again, sorry, Jeffrey. So again, I may or may not within that article to advertise the ebook or to, to lead them to the ebook also add a video. No. So you, you asked Jeffrey, cause I want yeah, to ask no, no. question for Frank. The reason why I asked is because we produced in the Northern Federation of Divers, this booklet, mm -hmm. which is comes out four times a year. And they've got articles on all the diving and what you know what's going on, etc. But what David did 
who is the magazine editor, he's put them on a flip book. So when they actually come out, you flip the pages mm -hmm. like reading a book. Mm -hmm. And he sent me the link over yesterday because he thinks that some of the stuff that I've written would be far better going into the likes of a book like this, mm -hmm. where people who are used to reading can flip the pages more than yeah. they do at the moment on some of my articles. And I just thought I'd mention it because yeah. <clears throat> it's another visual way. Totally. So the question you've got to ask yourself, uh, I think I mentioned this before, is for what purpose? If your intention is to drive traffic, then doing it as a normal article with your keywords is going to be one of the better ways. Of course, adding a video, etc. Uh, if you have something like that where you know you've got the, the pages being able to turn, I stand to be corrected on this, so I'm no uh, SEO trainer or anything. I stand to be corrected, but I think that it's not going to have the same SEO impact because Google and the, the, the bots won't be able to read the article in the same way as uh, if you had it in a, you know, like a text uh, essentially yes, yes. on your article. Uh, mm. Of course, what you can do is you can, if you wanted to read it. So that's why I asked you the other day about, you know, your, your uh, success uh, articles yes, yes. Uh, or uh, MP3s. You can actually go and read them and then make a, a video from them as well. Because Google owns YouTube and YouTube gains the second largest search engine you know, or what people use for searching anyway. So they're so smart nowadays that they can actually hear the audio within your video and utilize that as part of the SEO algorithm as well. So one of the things that I'm busy with at the moment, we spoke about this yesterday actually, is the video that I did, or sorry, the, the uh, presentation last week about the different ways of generating the income. Now what I've done is I've taken the video to text. So there's a program, the video plays, they extract all of the text. I essentially copy the text, then just go and pretty it up and make, you know, keywords, etc. And so from that, I've now got a blog article that I can add the video into. So Google's happy from uh, the, the blog point of view. And again, there's about two and a half thousand words in that. There's a video in there. There's of course, alt tagged images, etc. So like I said, it's all for what purpose are you doing it? Are you mm -hmm. doing just give the information in an ebook format? And also because it's too much information because you couldn't put 50,000 words in one page on, no, your, no. on your website, right? Nobody would ever read it. So it's easy for them in that format as an ebook. Yeah. So but if you want to do it for SEO, then keep it to sort of 2000 words. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in your view on the size of the article. I think the one I'm going to put on today is very short because the point is a, is a simple point and, and I didn't want to blather on, which I'm quite capable of doing, um, preferably when somebody is paying me. Um, but I think on average, the articles I've posted and I've, and I can, I know I've been sat there thinking, oh my God, you know, this is too long. Um, have probably been like eight, 900 words. And I've been sitting there thinking, oh, I bet you 500 is the target. And, and now that's really given me a different perspective. If you're saying it's, you know, it's, it's getting on for 2000 is the, is the optimum length. Mm -hmm. That's a totally different um, perception for me. And this is within LinkedIn, a, a 2000 article. No, th this is on your blog, on your website. Right. Right, because I, I would have thought that what Frank said a moment ago, 500 words, maybe 600 words is more than sufficient to go onto a LinkedIn. So remember, again, you can use LinkedIn in different ways. You've got your private profile, but you can also have a company profile. And so your articles can be put in different, in different contexts. Okay, so one of the things that you can do is you can write your article on 
your website, which from a Google SEO point of view, you know, is generating uh, traffic. Yeah. Then you can take a, so, so one of the ways I like to do it, uh, will you guys be able to see uh, if I do a little bit of that? Are we all happy for time, by the way, because oh, we're just okay. over the hour. Uh, are you okay? Okay, so what I do is I write my, uh, my blog. I'm very much a do something once, try to get multiple bang for your buck. Okay, uh, so it's from a time perspective. Mm -hmm. So I write the blog. Now, again, that's from Google SEO. From there, what I do is I send an email. So I take a snippet of the blog and I email my contact list. I say, if you want to read more, then I put a link to the actual article on the website. So it drives traffic to the website. It also keeps engagement with my audience. Mm -hmm. Now what you can do, of course, you've got your blog, but you can also go and turn that into a vlog. So your video blog. So essentially what you do is you are creating a video from your blog. Like I said, you can also do it vice versa. You can write a blog from your vlog. Uh, the beauty of that is when you got your blog and you then have a video embedded in your blog, some people just want to watch it. So that serves them. And, and of course, also the auditory people that just want to uh, listen to it. And then you've got uh, the people that might actually want to prefer to just speed read it. Okay. Uh, or just read it uh, as an example. So use your blog, but add a video inside it as well. Now what I then do is because I've already got that, I go to, and Frank mentioned it earlier, use a platform like Hootsuite. So the aim is, yeah, you take your link of your article. So just the, you know, the domain name of where the article lives on your website. And you just put in Hootsuite O uh, article on driving offenses, as an example. You connect your three different platforms and press send and suddenly your article lives on all of those platforms as well. So now you've got engaged more people that can potentially read. They want to read, so they click on the link so they come back to your website. So again, engages or, or gives you more traffic towards your website. Yeah, And all that you did is you just started with your one article. I got Hootsuite somewhere but I don't actually know how to use it now because it's changed since I put it on about three years ago. Okay, so Hootsuite, you just literally go and type it into Google so because it's an online platform. So you just type in Hootsuite. You'll uh, log in. Uh, most often, I just log in through my Facebook account. So you can have your Facebook account connected. Mm -hmm. You select your different profiles that you want on there. Again, with the free version. And for most people, the free version is, is enough. I'm so, paying. Sorry? I'm paying and I have been for about three years and not used it properly. Right. I've had it now for probably 12 years and I've wow. got the free version and it, and it works perfectly. Like I said, it depends. Again, it comes back to that for what purpose. If I'm going to go post something on YouTube, I deliberately go to YouTube and upload the file because then I can do all the keywords. And in fact, I'll be in the ebook. I'm going to create one specifically on YouTube in the next week or so. Uh, so if you go and add a video to your YouTube, how do you select your tags, i.e., your keywords? How do you uh, put it in certain files? So if somebody wants to look for, let's say, Frank, as an example, you've got a YouTube channel and you've got one on drunk driving offenses. Uh, speeding offences, driving blindfold offences, whatever they might be, right? But you might have 20 videos on each one of those. So instead of just having all 60 on the site, you can actually put them that they live in their own files, in their own folders. And so the person that's specifically looking for that can just look at it. So they call it a playlist. They can go into the playlist and then just go and search for those particular videos. So there's a few things that you can do with, uh, mm. with YouTube and it's actually much easier to rank within YouTube than it is just in normal Google. So when you can combine them, mm. so add your video onto your blog and you're hitting both of those, 
a uh, lot, lot easier. Okay. That's, right. a great, that's a great little presentation that Wayne on, and I love your expression getting, was it more buck for your dollar? Eh? <laughs> you know, it, 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 I love that. It's one unit of work with, uh, and, and it's harvested in five fields. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It is. It, it is superb. It's it's all about right. time, you know, because we're all pressed for for time. Mm -hmm. So rather than doing the same thing over and over, do it mm -hmm. once and just yeah, exploit it. Yeah. yeah, this is it. Yeah. It, it. You you you've got me going again on doing my putting them on my blog on my website first, and then feeding out from there as I used to do. Right. Well, I'm impressed. Uh, I think we ought to call it because we're now coming up to uh, an hour and 10 minutes. Um, Len, would you like to do a 10 minutes similar presentation next Friday? Yeah, can, yeah. I think it would be interesting to hear what you, what you found are the, uh, and it may be a wide range, you know, are there particular businesses that are ideal? Um, and if somebody was looking to franchise, it's like when somebody wants to exit for a, from a business, they can't just get up today and say, I'm going to sell the business. They need to speak to their accountant, their lawyers, and, and there's, there's preparation to optimize tax and everything else. Oh, yeah. are, are there things that a potential franchise or how do they get their ducks in a row so that they are at the optimum stage and structure to make it easy then to, to franchise with the best result. That yeah. would be interesting for me. I think I've mentioned it before. I, I do a seven step strategy. That, that if somebody comes to me and says, I want to franchise my business, I ask them five questions first. The answer yes to those five questions is right. These are the seven steps you need to take before you start to franchise your business. Yeah. Oh, excellent. And if I go through those seven steps, that is probably the best way to do it, I would think. You know, the first book I wrote was buying a franchise, the keys to success, and that was aimed at franchisees, prospective franchisees. I, I think you've got you've got two talks there, Len. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, and and I don't see why in in you know if we keep this going, I don't see why in the Jeffrey Prince season you couldn't do both. Yeah, yeah. There, there are two different subjects. Yeah, hmm. actually, two different subjects. Okay. Right, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed.